Hi everybody, Dennis Gebhardt here. The video clip you are about to see is a result of an experiment that we did today in the salon. The experiment was focused on testing the corrosiveness of peroxide because there seems to be lots of controversy in our industry about whether peroxide is most damaging or whether it's the alkalinity that is most damaging. So today we put it to a test and I will let the test speak for itself as you watch it but I want to let you know the reason we do this is so that you can understand and so that you can master the chemicals that we work with. Now remember peroxide turns protein or cysteine into cysteine and that's what you're going to see happen in this video. You're going to see the actual effect of peroxide by itself on a protein source and I think it will be quite empowering for you and quite eye-opening so enjoy the video guys Dennis Gebhardt here time to do an experiment you know I, I, I'm the kind of person that sometimes I think visuals are much easier and, and more validating than just hearing information being shared with you so you guys up for an experiment today? Here's what I want to do. I want to talk about the corrosiveness of peroxide. You know, many of the people in our industry believe that the real danger in color process is the alkalinity. And actually, I'm going to let you see today how corrosive peroxide is. So in order to do that, we have to see how peroxide affects protein. And so what I've done is uh, I have, Sylvia, if you'll just kind of scan down to the bowls, I have, um, some sirloin steak which is a fine example of protein now i have three bowls with that actually four bowls with the sirloin steak and so let's uh, go to the one in the center cell this is our control i want you to keep uh, an idea about what our control looks like it's beautiful it's got beautiful tonality to it and everything and so we're going to begin with the first one over here sylvia and <clears throat> and we have 40 volume developer Everybody can see that's 40 volume. So I'm gonna take 40 volume developer by itself and I'm gonna simply pour it on the sirloin. And we're gonna let that process for 30 minutes, which is the average time that a hair color will set on hair. This is 40 volume. Now over here, Sal, if you will please, this is 20 volume developer. And so on this piece of sirloin, we're going to apply 20 volume developer and we're going to let that set on that sirloin for 30 minutes. Now, it would not be fair if we didn't give it a fair test. So here on this piece of sirloin, we're going to mix simply bleach and water. So Sylvia, you can see here I'm taking bleach out of my my bag of bleach and I'm putting it in the bowl and I'm going to add warm water and then I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to mix it until it has a nice consistency to it and then I'm going to take the bleach and water no developer the bleach and water and I'm going to pour that over this piece of sirloin and we're gonna let everything set for approximately 30 minutes. Now, here's what I want you to think about. This is protein, just like the protein in your hair. The only difference is the protein in your hair is keratinized. So understanding that, uh, we should see some interesting things happening here with this protein. We should see it start to disintegrate and really start to come apart. In fact, if you look over here on the 40 volume right now, you can see the bubbles that are starting to occur. This is the interaction of the developer and the protein together. Now, here's what you need to know. Peroxide to us as human beings is deadly, meaning that it's part of what we breathe. We breathe approximately a 20% content of oxygen in the air that we breathe normally. However, Oxidative stress, part of oxidation, is also part of what happens as we age, as we get older. So you're going to see what peroxide by itself does to protein. 
And hopefully, my goal is, at the end of this experiment, is that we will make a discovery that the real aggressive product in the color process is not the alkalinity, it is the peroxide. So, hope you're excited about this, just as I am. I'll see you back here in about 30 minutes. Have a great one. Guys, it's Dennis again. Gosh, I'm having fun. I bet you're excited to see what we came up with. But before we rinse it, I just wanted to come back on and show you what we're dealing with. So, Syl, can you again take a picture of the control swatch? The control swatch. <laughs> the control meat. This is a meat seminar. Okay, take control meat. Okay, so over here with the 40 volume, if you will. I'm going to wipe this down. I just want you to see what's happening. Look at that. Can you see the holes? Oh, my God. Watch this with my... I can poke holes in this. It's like a wiffle ball, for God's sakes. Look at that. Okay? And we haven't even rinsed it yet. I'll just put it back up there. I'm doing a little bit of basting on my sirloin here. Let's go to the 20 volume, Sil. Over here on the 20 volume. Well, I can't even wipe it down. Look, part of the meat's already broken off. Look at this. Oh, my Lord in heaven. It's like that. What's that cube steak people make for breakfast? <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Well... This is your protein on peroxide. All right, so now let's go over here and look at ammonia or uh, alkaline and water, bleach and water. Look at this. This piece of sirloin is not that much different than this control. In fact, it's still very hard to put a comb through it, to put the tip of my comb. It still has resistance, it's still got tone. So it tells me that actually, <laughs> The peroxide has destroyed this, <laughs> and the uh, bleach and water has left it in pretty reasonable state. So, with that being said, we're going to rinse. We'll be back in just five. Hey, everybody, we are back. It's time to see what they actually look like after we rinse them all off. For those of you that are maybe on this scope for the first time, what we've done is we've been testing the corrosiveness of peroxide on protein. So what we used is we used sirloin, which is a fine example of protein. And on one of the, one of the tests, we used 40 volume. On the other, we used 20. And on the third, we used bleach and water. Bleach, high alkalinity, we would normally assume that that would be the most damaging in a color process. But here's what I want you to take a look at. Here is our control. Silk, can you please uh, scan down on our control? There's my uh, tester. All right, now. Look at this, look at this, this is the 40 volume. Oh my God, we've destroyed that protein. So, for all of those people that think that they're cool and they're all that in a bag of chips and they're popping in a 100 volume developer in their mixtures, look at what 40 volume does. What do you think 50 volume would do? And you know what 100 or 130 would do because that's four times as strong. Here's the 20 volume. I want you to compare the 20 and the 40. You can see that there is a considerable amount of difference. 20 volume still leaves it intact. The 40 volume literally disintegrates it. And the thing that's most impressive is the bleach and water. Look at that. It still has tone. It still has color. It still has integrity. Very similar to what's happening here with our control. So. Hope you've enjoyed that experiment. I hope it helps you understand the corrosiveness of peroxide. Truly, I believe that an educated hair colorist is an empowered hair colorist. Our job at Guru Villages is to empower you. Hope we've done that today. Have a great Wednesday. See you soon. All right, so there we have it. You've seen what science tells us happens when you put peroxide on a protein source. I am sure many of you are going, oh my God. <laughs> if you are a meat eater, you probably never want to eat meat again. You're probably going to convert to vegan. But the point of this whole exercise today was to share information with you that empowers you. Our total focus at Guru Villages is to empower the salon professional. So I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you find this beneficial, please share it too with your friends on social media because I truly believe that in order for us to grow and become more successful in this industry, 
we have to master the foundation. Check us out or visit us at www.gurivillages.com for our webinars and for educational events that we are holding across the country. And I also invite you to come and visit us on Monday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for our weekly Periscope broadcast. Listen, I thank you all so much for spending time. I thank you for learning from this video and allowing me to share this information with you. And as we say at Guru Villages, now go out and discover your genius.